Hi, and welcome to AFA Chats, brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, or AFA. My name is Zulima Chavez, and I'm the Support Center Manager for AFA. I'll be your host, along with Elisa Ziza, AFA's Director of Development. The information presented in this chat is educational and not intended to provide individual medical advice. Please talk with your allergist or healthcare provider for advice about your personal health. Today, we are talking to Brittany Mahomes, entrepreneur, athlete, and mom of two kids with food allergies. She shares her game plan to tackle food allergies in her home and on the go. We'd like to thank Kaleo for their sponsorship of this conversation and the support AFA has received over the years. Hi, Brittany. Welcome and thank you for joining us to raise awareness about food allergies. You've partnered with Kaleo, the makers of AviQ epinephrine auto injectors, to raise awareness of severe allergic reactions in young children. Can you share with us why this is important to you and what led you to use your platform to raise awareness? Yeah, so I think of as a mom um, of two kids that do have food allergies, I think it's important to raise awareness of this and get the information out there. I felt like when I had my first kid, you know, I wasn't too aware that these things are actually very common and it's becoming more and more common. And there's actually a ton of, you know, other families and moms that are dealing with the same thing. So um, just, you know, making it more aware that there are, you know, lots of families out there and you're not alone dealing with this. And I um, obviously went through a very scary situation with my son um, and we were actually prescribed our AviQ through our pediatrician for Sterling when she had her reaction. So, you know, um, we had that when Bronze's reaction occurred. And so it was just kind of a natural fit, but just, you know, getting my story out there and letting everybody know that this is, this is normal. This is common and it's becoming more common. That's a very powerful message. Thank you so much. Um, If it's all right with you, I'd like to ask about your children's reactions. Uh, Recently, we did some research on the signs and symptoms of severe allergic reactions in infants and toddlers, and we found that they're not the same as older children or adults. We know that it can be tricky sometimes for parents and caregivers to figure out if their child is just getting sick or having an allergic reaction. When your children first started having allergic reactions, was it really obvious to you what was happening? No, it was not obvious at all. And I, you know, have went through two completely different severe reactions with both of my kids. Um, With Sterling, it was completely different from with bronze. And with Sterling's, you know, she was just vomiting and sneezing and you know, in a sense, that could be any sickness, um, you know, like a stomach bug or just, you know, you never know. So with Sterling, it was, you know, vomiting, sneezing, you know, red, itchy eyes. And then with bronze, um, it was a little bit more scary, I felt like, because with Sterling, you know, she was vomiting, she was getting it all out. And then she kind of showed progression, you know, pretty quickly after that, that she, you know, was a little bit better. But with bronze, he just, you know, began to get a little bit fussy. And so, you know, in my sense, let me back up. So with bronze, I was sterling with my history with my oldest with allergies. I was a little bit more aware aware of things. So when bronze came around, you know, we started doing a little bit of early introduction with new things just because I was a little bit scarred from my oldest. And so we were on the first day of peanuts and he, it was just a little powder that you mix into your bottle And within the hour or so, he began to get fussy. And again, you know, a kid being fussy could mean anything. And it could, it has a very wide range. You know, they can't talk to you and tell you how they're feeling. So he just began to get a little bit fussy. So I then was like, you know, maybe he's tired. Let's go start bedtime a little bit early. So we went into the bathroom and that's where I took his diaper off and realized he had completely broken out into hives and welts, like just within his diaper area. And so I'd put him into the bath thinking, you know, my, this might calm him down. And it just began to get worse and worse and within minutes covered his entire body. So that's when we realized, you know, I'm going to go to the emergency room just to make sure everything's okay. But we did have our AviQ on hand because like I said before, that's what we carried for Sterling. And so we had that with us, you know, if we needed to use it, but we ultimately did not end up having to use it. And 
we got to the emergency room and they, you know, his heart was fine. He was breathing fine and everything was okay. So at that moment, I, you know, could finally breathe and relax a little bit, but it is definitely terrifying as a parent to go through this in any way, you know, whether it's severe, non-severe or, you know, from child to adult, it's just, it's a very scary situation. And I think raising awareness about it is, is huge. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that as a mom who's managing food allergies for my daughter, I could really empathize and relate to to your story. So thanks again for, for raising awareness. After my daughter was diagnosed, one of the things I needed to figure out was what foods she could eat safely. And I found it really helpful to focus on what she can have and not what she can't. What are some of your family's favorite allergy-friendly snacks? Yeah. So I love that you said that because I think, you know, with families that have to deal with allergies, I think it's huge to focus on, you know, things that they can have and the positive versus, you know, looking at the negative. Um, That's definitely a big thing that we like to do is focus on what they can have and the positive things and not so much the negative. And some of our favorite snacks, I would say, um, we love applesauce pouches. (laughs) We love um, any type of fruit. Um, we love like fruit snacks and nature bake, like little fig bars. There are a ton of snacks out there that are allergy friendly safe. So, you know, and I'm sure as we go on and, you know, raise more awareness and get the stories out, I hope to think that, you know, more brands and more companies are going to keep, you know, producing allergy safe snacks. You just described the foods in my diaper bag. It sounds so yummy. <laughs> So, thanks thanks for those tips. Uh, We know you're a busy family, always on the go. What do you do to make sure your children have access to safe food when you're traveling? Yeah, so we bring it ourselves. You know, we we have a really big game plan and really big, um, you know, looking ahead and staying prepared whenever wherever we go, and always, you know, just making sure that we have what we need. So, packing more than enough snacks, packing food that you know, we can create things for them that are allergy friendly safe. If, if we know we're going somewhere that, you know, we travel internationally, we travel all around the world and not everywhere has, you know, stuff that can accommodate us. So I think just planning ahead and packing, you know, what you need, um, just at least to get you started through the first few days till you can go out and find some stuff that's safe for them um, is definitely the way we go about things. Those are great tips. Um, So for our next question, Brittany, what steps do you take to make sure other caregivers and people around your kids understand their allergies and know how to prevent and treat a reaction if one occurs? So I think it's a huge thing, you know, we've done from the start is make sure everyone around us knows how to use our OVIQ. Um, and it does speak to you and walk you through the steps on how to use it. So I am pretty confident, you know, if someone is around that we haven't trained on it, they will know how to use it. But we make sure everyone around us knows how to use our AviQ, um, our epinephrine auto injector if we need it. Um, but just, you know, making everyone it's it's pretty straightforward, you know, like bronze cannot have nuts of any kind and sterling cannot have milk, eggs and nuts of any kind. And so just, you know, getting that out there and voicing that for my kids in whatever situation and wherever we are, um, is definitely what I do. And as a mom and as a parent, it's your job to protect your kids and advocate for your kids. So a huge message, you know, I would love to, you know, get out there is don't ever feel bad for that and feel confident in speaking up and advocating for your kids in whatever setting you may be in. Yeah, that's great. Advocating for yourself and your family is so important. Sometimes food allergies can feel overwhelming to families dealing with a new diagnosis, and it can help to share messages of hope. Can you share what you're hopeful for in the future? Yeah, I think I'm hopeful for most um, is just that other families and other, you know, kids and moms out there start to be more aware of allergies. And, you know, they just realize that it's more common. And I think I think and I hope to, you know, not divide these families with allergies and non-allergies, but just bring them all together and making everyone aware and, you know, to care about these kids and not, you know, just be more understanding. And I know like even if you're not dealing with the allergies and you're not having to go go through it, just make sure that these kids, you know, you're understanding them and you're making sure that they don't feel alone in any setting or space. And I, you know, I hope to think that more brands and more companies and stuff begin to create things that are safe for kids with allergies and start to give more of a variety out there um, everywhere you go. 
Wow. What what a powerful message to end on. Brittany, thank you again for your time today. It was such an honor to speak with you and learn about your experience with food allergies. Your story really hits home for me, and I'm sure it'll resonate with the Kids with Food Allergies community as well. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. Before we say goodbye today, we'd like to thank Kaleo again for their kind sponsorship and Brittany for sharing her story to help educate about food allergies. If you have questions about food allergies or just need someone to talk to, our Kids with Food Allergies online community is always open. You can find it at kidswithfoodallergies.org slash join.